I'm a little bit reminiscent of summer and I was thinking what could I make which is summer in one bite and the thing which came to my mind is gluten-free lasagna. So today I'm going to try to make a gluten-free lasagna bolognese. That will be so delicious it will not only outshine its glutinous cousins but will fool anyone to think it is the real deal. between lasagna bolognese, something I grew up with, and lasagna. And apparently lasagna bolognese uses bechamel and a bolognese sauce. Lasagna from Naples uses ricotta cheese. Who would have known? I didn't know. Anyway, regardless if it's lasagna bolognese, the one I'm gonna make today, my lasagna bolognese recipe is so good that the Italian guy told me it is better than his mom's. But he told me certainly, never ever tell my mom that yours is better than yours. So Steve, your secret is safe with me. Hi mom, my recipe is better than yours. I don't know if it's better than Steve's mom's, but it's a nice recipe and I'm pretty proud of it. So let's get started on making my lasagna bolognese. Because all Asian kids learn how to make lasagna, right? I mean, obviously. For my bolognese, I normally start with a fresh onion, then I'm going to have garlic and basil and tomato sauce. And I have to do my favorite thing first. I have to chop onions and peel garlic. And I'm going to use one large onion for that. I do think onion and garlic are an important ingredient to this recipe. So I'm going to use a whole onion. And I want to chop it into small pieces. Now I'm starting to cry. I promise Steve didn't break my heart that much. And I'm gonna transfer my onion into a metal bowl. Okay, I survived the onions. So that should be enough onions. And I wanna use five garlic bulbs. And to peel them, I normally press off the stem and then I just force it open. And then I'm gonna cut the bottom of it. And with that, I can separate my garlic gloves really fast. Here's a small little trick which I didn't know for years, which really helps with peeling the garlic gloves. You take the garlic glove, you put your knife on the top of it and press down with your hands. You smash the garlic and then you can just pop it out of the skin. And some people like to use garlic powder, mm, it's not the same. So here are my five garlic gloves. You can also use much more garlic in the sauce. You can use instead of five or six, use eight or nine. I mean. I personally think there's never enough garlic. Italian cooking, Indian cooking, a lot of the good flavors really come from the garlic. Some people don't like the smell, but seriously, if you don't like garlic or onions, I think Italian might not be the right cuisine for you. Just consider maybe more German food. Just saying, Italian food has garlic. A lot of the really tasty Italian recipes have garlic, and ideally a lot of it. And the last thing I have to prep is cutting up my basil. And that's the moment where the smell really hits you. I normally use one bundle of fresh basil, but if I can have more, again, I personally think there's never enough basil. To steer from my onions and to start to add the beef to my sauce, I normally use olive oil. Regular olive oil, not virgin olive oil. Until last week, I went to a really nice restaurant here in Dublin we bought from them a very delicious virgin olive oil. It's really tasty. So I thought maybe they can sell me also regular olive oil. Well, the waiter looked at me when I asked him for regular olive oil and he was just like, in Italy we just use virgin olive oil. There is not something like olive oil. And I'm just like, um, sorry, yeah. Um, and I'm just looking for some olive oil so I can fry my uh, my um, onions and such. I was just like, well, I was looking for a more basic olive oil because it's a bit expensive, this really nice uh, virgin olive oil. And he just like, well, let me go to the kitchen and ask them. He came back and it was so nice to bring me a bottle of olive oil. But it's again, virgin olive oil. I came to the conclusion, 
Italy just has virgins. So I'm going to add now some of my delicious virgin olive oil. So I'm going to put half the onions in my pot and saute them now in the olive oil. Mm, start to smell the onions. You see how they're starting to brown. And I'm going to use now my garlic press. This one is a really nice one because I can clean it up easily. Garlic presses are a little story in themselves. So here is my pressed garlic. You also can smell how the garlic is starting to turn. So I'm going to add now half a kilo or one pound of ground beef. I personally like the fatty one, so I normally would use 80%. And I'm going to use my chopstick to break the meat into smaller chunks. And I want to brown the meat, almost making like a ground beef sauce. So here is where my lasagna bolognese differs from other lasagna bolognese. Most recipes tell you you brown the meat, then you pour off the fat and the beef, and later on just add the beef back to the sauce. Yeah, I don't do that. I'm not gonna pour off the beef and the fat and the grease and the beef juices. That is really flavorful stuff. So I'm gonna keep my beef, I'm gonna keep my juices, I keep everything in there, and then I'm gonna add fresh tomatoes, or in this case, canned tomatoes. And this fancy can is from Italy. So I hope it has a nice, rich flavor. And I'm gonna break down the canned tomatoes with a spoon. You can use also a fork for it. I'm going to use about one and a half kilos of four cans, which should be 1,600 grams. And I'm going to mash them with my hands. I don't really mind the feeling. I know other people rather use a fork, so use a fork. And then I'm going to add that to my ground beef. And I'm going to add some delicious red wine. Now, this is a little bit of an older wine. We had it from a party, which is fine. It didn't turn into vinegar yet. so. It is actually better to use cheap wine or older wine than using a really fancy bottle. So if you have some red wine left over from a party, keep it. You might be able to use it in a tomato sauce. And you see how liquid the sauce now is? And how much darker red it is? That's really from the red wine. I have to let the sauce cook in for another 30 to 50 minutes. It really depends how liquid my sauce is. You can see now how much the tomato sauce in the wine has reduced and how thick the sauce is. So I'm gonna turn off the heat now. I'm gonna quick taste my sauce. Oh yeah, wine, tomato, needs a little bit of sugar. Italian tomatoes are much sweeter than from other places. I assume it's the temperature, especially if you buy tomatoes in the United States. They tend to be not quite as sweet. So I like to add some sugar to it. In this case, I'm going to add about one tablespoon and I'm going to use dark brown sugar. You don't want to add a lot. You just want to add a little bit to help bringing out the flavor a bit more. The brown sugar definitely brought out the sweetness of the tomatoes. And now I need to add salt. I'm going to use about half a tablespoon. You want to taste and flavor. I think it's sometimes hard to say how much salt you need. I'm going to add a little bit more. Now I'm going to add my pepper and now I have to add the most important other ingredient, which is the fresh basil. Now I'm going to mix it. Now, if I would use fresh tomatoes, I do the same thing. I just may have to cook the tomatoes much longer just for them to reduce. Oh, this is good. I might want to add a little bit more garlic flavor. And if I do that, I'm going to add about three freshly pressed garlic gloves to it because that just gives it a little bit of extra garlic flavor. If you don't like garlic as much, don't do it. Otherwise, yeah, just add a little bit more. Three fresh ones. That just did the trick. I can make my lasagna right now, but it's getting a bit dark. So I'm going to layer my lasagna tomorrow. Before I can layer my lasagna, I'm going to cook first my gluten-free lasagna sheets. Now, most of the lasagna sheets say you do not have to pre-cook them, but I don't trust it. And today I'm going to use gluten-free pre-made lasagna sheets from Australia. To pre-cook them, I'm going to boil some water 
I'm going to add my sheets to it and let it cook for about five to six minutes. They don't have to be perfectly done. I'm going to pour them off and set them aside before I'm going to start assembling now my lasagna. I normally use a casserole dish to layer my lasagna. And you always want to add first your bolognese sauce. Now my bolognese sauce is pretty thick, so I want to spread it with my spatula. If my sauce would be hot, you don't, wouldn't have to do that. It's really to make sure that the lasagna doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. And then I'm going to layer the lasagna sheets. Wow, they're still hot. And now I'm going to add a scoop of my bechamel sauce. Again, I want a thin layer. So I'm going to use my spatula. You just want to have enough bechamel sauce to cover the lasagna sheets. And now I'm going to cover the bechamel sauce with more lasagna sheets. Ah, hot, ah, hot. Then I'm going to add again a ladle full of bolognese sauce to cover again my lasagna. And I'm going to add my next lasagna layer. Now I'm going to add another layer of bechamel sauce. I added two layers of bechamel sauce and three layers of bolognese. And the last layer of my lasagna is always a bolognese layer. Because the red comes through and it looks very pretty. Here is my lasagna. I can now bake my lasagna for about 30 minutes before I'm going to add some shredded mozzarella on the top of it. Then I'm going to bake it for another 20 minutes and for the last 15 minutes I'm going to add some freshly grated parmesan because parmesan cheese just browns much faster than mozzarella does. And if I don't want to do my lasagna right now, I'm just going to put the lasagna into my fridge. And when I'm ready, I just take it out and start to put it into the oven. And here's my freshly baked lasagna. You can smell all those different delicious flavors. Mmm, I'm hungry. I hope you enjoyed today's show and if you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos. And if you have any comments, feedback, ideas which I can try out, please make sure to add them below in the comment box. And I see you next week. Bye!